From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Lieutenant Lefebvre, New Orleans Police. Good morning, Lieutenant. Anything new on the Freddy Quintana murder? Yes. Oh? You. What? You said you were with Quintana last night. On business, Lieutenant. What kind of business, Dollar? Well, it's a long story. I'm sure. I think you better tell it to me. Okay, I'll be right over. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New Orleans to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item 12, $1.20, cab fare from my hotel to police headquarters where Detective Lieutenant Lefebvre was waiting for me. All right, Dollar, now what's it all about? Lieutenant, it's mainly about Tom <laughs> Chase, alias Tom James. Chase? James? Who's he? Former junior partner in the investment firm of Everson and Chase in New York City. Chase embezzled $120,000 from the firm. It's not very easy to do. I know, but he was real smart about it. George Everson, the senior partner, explained how Chase had done it. You see, he specialized in long-term investments. Well, people that buy and hold on, huh? Yeah, that's right. Chase juggled the accounts, and over what must have been a period of many months, he siphoned off a total of $120,000. Mm-hmm. How'd Everson find out about it? Oh, one of their clients suddenly decided to sell out. His count wasn't as fat as it should have been, huh? That's right. Everson immediately ordered an audit. The total shortage was discovered and the DA's office moved in. Did uh, Chase make any kind of statement? No, no, none at all. He just clammed up. Everson tried to get him to explain, and so did Chase's wife, Lola. But he wouldn't say anything. Everson raised bail for him, and Chase promptly jumped bail and disappeared. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I've heard stories like this before, Doc. Yeah, sure. Open and shut embezzlement. Anybody find a motive? Well, we're just guessing at that. Could be any one of the standard ones, I guess. Uh, gambling debts, maybe? Oh, I don't know. As far as we can determine, Chase didn't do any gambling. Of course, you never really know. Uh, what about a woman? Well, now, that's probably closer to it. Although I'm like George Everson. If it was a woman, I don't get it. Why not? You should see Chase's wife, Lola. Oh, like that, eh? Like that. Still, the woods are full of men who've run out on good wives. Oh, yeah. There was something wrong in the happy home, all right, but I guess it was all on Chase's part. Was he? Lola told me he'd been moody and tense for some time before the embezzlement became known. He was away from home a lot at night. Told her he'd been working late. Mm -hmm. That, too, sounds familiar. She asked George Everson about it, and George told her it wasn't so. Then there was the matter of the vacation... Vacation? Yeah, at the last moment, Tom Chase told Lola he couldn't get away, but insisted she go anyway. So she went to Martha's Vineyard alone. Mm-hmm. Well, it certainly has all the earmarks of another woman. I know. I asked George Everson if he knew of any other woman. He said no. I haven't had the heart to ask Lola Chase that yet. But I got a hunch that's what she's afraid of this, too. Well, it's all very interesting, Dollar, but what's he got to do with Freddie Quintana's murder here in New Orleans? Yeah. Here's a New York newspaper. Last week. Take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Article on New Orleans jazz. Yeah. That's a picture of Ace's Castle down on the quarter. George Everson spotted this picture. The fellow in the background sitting at the bar looked to him like Tom Chase. And Chase was crazy about jazz. And that's why you come down here to New Orleans? Yep. Freddie Quintana contacted me night before last and told me Tom Chase was in New Orleans under the name of Tom James. Did he have any proof to show you? A letter Chase had started to Lola, then threw away. Quintana stole it from Chase's room. The handwriting genuine? Mm Mm-hmm. I checked it against a sample of Chase's writing that I'd brought with me. Yeah, it's his, all right. Go on. Well, Quintana told me to meet him in his room at midnight. He'd have Chase there. Apparently, he was pretending to negotiate with Chase for passage out of the country. Oh? So Lola and I went to Quintana's room at midnight. But he didn't show. And I took her back to a hotel. Then I met you. And you showed me Freddy Quintana's body in the alley. It sure looks like Tom Chase didn't want to get found. Mm -hmm. So now if we get Tom Chase, we got Freddy Quintana's killer. 
That's about the size of it, Lieutenant. I don't know. What do you mean? Dollar, quarter's been my beat for a long time now. So? So Freddy Quintana was a real bad boy. That's what I've been told. And when a bad boy gets himself killed, it isn't always easy to tag the man who did it. Meaning there are a lot of them who'd like to have done it, huh? In Freddy's case, a long line of them. I don't doubt it. Well, we give it a whirl. Tom Chase, that is Tom James. I'll get out bulleting on him. If he's the one, though, he'd probably skip time by now. Could be. What's your next move, Jenny? One that I don't look forward to, believe me. Oh? Breaking the news to Lola Chase. I just won't believe it, Johnny. I know. It was hard enough to think that Tom was an embezzler, but he isn't a killer, Johnny. He couldn't be. A nice guy can get twisted up. Then, when he's on the run, he sometimes acts like an animal. He'll destroy anything or anyone who's between him and his freedom. But what kind of freedom can a man have who's... I guess you were right, Johnny. Yeah, what about? You said I shouldn't have come down here from New York. That there was nothing I could do except get hurt more. Oh, I can understand your feeling. You had to come, but, well... Johnny, I wish you were working for me right now. This investigation, I mean. I'd just call it off. Afraid it isn't that simple. Your husband's still a fugitive. He's got to be found. That $120,000 or what's left of it has to be recovered. And if he is responsible for Quintana's murder... I know. It was just a wish. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, just a moment. It's for you, Johnny. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Johnny Dollar. Lieutenant Lefebvre. Thought I might find you there. Anything new, Lieutenant? Yes. That Tom James alias you gave us for Tom Chase paid off. Oh? We just located his room. Where? In a room and house in the quarter, a couple of doors from where Freddie Quintana lived. I'll meet you there in ten minutes. <laughs> Expense account item 13, $3. Cab fare from Lola's hotel to the rooming house in the quarter. $2 for the fare, a dollar extra for speed. The driver earned it. Eight minutes later, I met Lieutenant Lefebvre at the rooming house, a dilapidated two-story building. He took me to a room at the end of the hall on the first floor. There's it, Johnny. No sign of Chase, huh? No. We're keeping a stakeout on the room just in case, but I doubt if he'd be back. His clothes are gone. Looks like he left in a hurry, Lefebvre. Yeah. Take a look over here. Well, some charred pieces of paper. We fish them out of the wastebasket. That's a mistake amateurs usually make, burning stuff in a wastebasket. No draft. That's right. Some of it's not completely burned. See if any of it makes sense to you. Well, this one looks like part of a letter. This one... Yeah. Yeah, this one pegs Chase all right. Looks like a little piece of an envelope. Mm Mm-hmm. Could be he'd brought part of the money down here in it. You see? You can still read part of the letterhead in the upper corner. Everson and... The full name is Everson and Chase. That's the name of the firm. Chase was the junior partner. Yeah. Well, that makes it pretty clear that Tom James and Tom Chase are one the same. Did he rent the room under the name of Tom James? That's right. Haven't got any of the details yet. There's no manager here. Vacancies are handled by a rental agent down the street. I see. Here's another charred fragment I can't figure out. Here, take a look. It's right in here. And just some numbers. Looks like a 12 and a... 23. Mm-hmm. Mean anything to you? 12, 23. Oh, an address, maybe? Possibly. But that's not much help. What address? Oh, well, if I get any bright ideas, I'll call you. I'm going to pay a visit to that rental agent. can I do for you? Are you the agent for that rooming house down the street? That's right, sir. Collis. Here's the name Roger Collis. You'd like a room, maybe? No, thanks. I want some information. What about? Well, you rented a room some time ago to a man named Tom James, I believe. Well, let me see. I'll have to look it up. We keep all the rentals in this here book, and it ought to... Yeah, here it is. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, oh, yeah? Was there something special about that rental? Oh, indeed there was, my friend. A little over a week ago it was. 
Yeah, that would figure. And the month's rent was paid in advance. Is that what was so special about it? Oh, no, no, that's happened before. It was who rented it was so special. Well, I thought Tom James... It was rented for Mr. James by a friend of his. Oh? I sure wish I had a friend like that. Oh, man, what a woman. The motive for Tom Chase's embezzlement. It was a woman after all. He probably stayed undercover while she rented the room for him. I thought of his wife, Lola. I didn't want to see her get hurt anymore. Expense account item 14, cab fare to Lola's hotel. Is there something new, Johnny? You left in such a hurry. Lola, do yourself and me a favor. What is it? Go back to New York now. Why? Well, I just think it'll be better all around, that's all. Something's happened. You found out something. Johnny, please don't hold anything back from Look, me. Look, Lola, Whatever why... it is, I have a right to know. Yeah, I, I guess you do. Okay, I'm sorry to tell you this, but... It looks like Tom isn't traveling alone. Oh. I guess I always knew that was it. It had to be. I'm sorry. You're right, Johnny. The only thing for me to do now is go back to New York and forget. Try to forget. Thanks for everything, Johnny. Item 15, $3 even. Drinks for me. But they didn't take the bad taste out of my mouth. Lola, heading back to New York alone. And Chase, heading who knew where with 120 grand and not alone. I thought of that scrap of charred paper with the numbers on it, the one we'd found in this room. Twelve. Twenty-three. They could mean anything or nothing. Finally, I gave up trying to make sense out of it and picked up the evening paper. News section, not much of interest. Sports, the comics, the weather, harbor news, the... Harbor news. Ship arrivals and departures. Twelve. Twenty-three. Could that be the time of departure of a ship and the pier number? From Pier 23 at 12, maybe? Sure, it sounded like a long shot. But I had a strong hunch the trail might not be as cold as I'd thought. Now, here's our star to tell you about the next intriguing episode of this story. It's about a trail that heats up. And a girl who doesn't exactly help to cool things off. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.